My special greetings, space enthusiasts. I'm Rishabh and welcome to a lesson of Space Simplified. Let's dive right in. The creation of our Earth and its family planets is a long process. Today, we can only try to formulate theories and try to understand which fits in best since we humans exist thousands and thousands of years after the creation had taken place. Of course, there are multiple theories which try to explain the creation of these planets. And you know what? None of these theories can be marked as invalid because all of these theories explain the creation of our planets in multiple situations. We begin throughout the video with the first two leading theories which are the core accretion theory and the disk instability theory. Let's begin with the core accretion theory first since this is the widely accepted theory. According to the core accretion model, there exists dust, rocks and gas around the planet, protoplanet disk. These rocks then come together through gravity and then collapse onto each other to form something known as planetesimals. These planets then can attract protoplanets and other such particles to grow bigger and bigger, such as comets and meteoroids or even asteroids. In fact, for Earth, this is how Earth had gained water. This is the best theory explaining the formation of terrestrial planets such as Earth and other such planets like Mars as well. And this process was repeating. As the mass increased, it had the capacity for attracting more particles and in this manner it grew bigger. At times, it even had the capacity for attracting other planets. In fact, for Earth, this is how its moon had formed. With an another planet colliding to the Earth's surface, the moon was born. Nevertheless, it didn't work as expected for gas giants. Of course, every other process for the same. The gas giants attracted gas and other such particles due to gravity in the core and it continues to grow in the manner. Although, the issue about this is that the time taken for the formation of these gas giants are far more than our calculations and simulations. Also, here's a fun fact. Did you know that the core accretion theory has helped us to understand the properties of recently discovered exoplanets? Using this theory, scientists can estimate the size and composition of an exoplanet based on the properties of its host star and the planet's distance from the star. This has allowed astronomers to make predictions about the nature of exoplanets that have been subsequently confirmed up through observations. Let me give an example. In 2007, scientists used the core accretion theory to predict the existence of a water world exoplanet, a planet mostly covered in water, which was later discovered in and confirmed in 2010. The success of core accretion theory in predicting the properties of exoplanets has helped us to validate the theory and provide further evidence for its role in explaining the formation of planets in our solar system and beyond our solar system. So in summary, the core accretion theory proposes that planets form through the gradual accumulation of solid material in the protoplanetary disk. Around a young star, the theory suggests the tiny particles of dust and ice clump together due to the mutual gravitational attraction, eventually forming planetesimals. These planetesimals then merge together through accretion to form fully fledged planets. For rocky planets, the planetesimals grow large enough to attract surrounding gas, forming a dense atmosphere and solid core. For gas giants, the planetesimals attract so much gas that they become massive enough to form gas giants such as Jupiter with thick atmosphere. The core accretion theory has been successful in predicting the properties of newly discovered exoplanets. 
in case you are in confusion exoplanets are planets which are outside our solar system and provo- so continuing so it of course is was successful in predicting the properties of newly discovered exoplanets and it provides a comprehensive explanation for the formation of both terrestrial and gas giants while it doesn't work as well in gas giants we checked before this the core accretion theory is still an active area of research and is widely accepted as one of the most promising models for planet formation moving to another theory disk instability since we have looked at the strengths and limitations of the core accretion model so the disk instability theory is another way of explaining how planets form around stars This theory suggests that planets form through the gravitational collapse of small regions within the protoplanetary disk rather than through gravitation through gradual accumulation of material as in the core accretion theory. According to the disk instability theory, the protoplanetary disk can become unstable due to differences in temperature or density. These instabilities can cause small pockets of gas and dust to collapse under their own gravity forming dense clumps that can grow into planets these clumps can either form directly into planets or first form smaller planetesimals that later accrete more material and grow into planets this theory is particularly relevant for explaining the formation of gas giant planets which can form quickly through gravitational collapse in the outer regions of the protoplanetary disk however it may not be as effective for explaining the formation of smaller rocky planets like earth overall the disk instability theory provides an alternate explanation for planet formation that complements the core accretion theory both theories are supported by observations and have contributed to our understanding of the wide range of planets in our universe to summarize the theory or the disk instability theory proposes an alternative mechanism for planet formation where planets form through the gravitational collapse of small pockets of gas and dust within the protoplanetary disk these dense clumps can either directly form into planets or into smaller planetesimals that later accrete more material and grow into planets the disk instability theory is particularly relevant for explaining the formation of gas giants planets which can quickly form through gravitational collapse in the outer regions of the protoplanetary disk however it may not be as effective in explaining the formation of smaller rocky planets like earth since it took much more time according to our simulations Despite this limitation, the disk instability theory is a valuable contribution to our understanding of planet formation and it complements the core accretion model in explaining the wide range of planets observed in the universe. So, thank you for watching this video. Signing off, Space Simplified.